Hi everyone, um, my name is Dan Epstein. I'm a doctor, a public health PhD candidate, game designer, and creator of Vax Cards, which I'm going to talk to you about today. Vax Cards is a collectible card game for vaccinations. So I got really frustrated as a doctor back in 2016, uh, a few years ago, not having good tools for discussing vaccines with vaccine hesitant children and parents in a lighthearted way, which wasn't very heavily triggering. The problems were that there wasn't really any incentives of vaccines for the kids. Uh, there was no engaging educational material. Uh, there wasn't an ability for that, to, uh, you know, anything to make an informed consumer of the child. There wasn't anything that created a proxy presence of herd immunity in the playground. The solutions that I had on hand were stale jelly beans, stickers, boring, wordy educational handouts. Uh, there was some research that showed that rice, cash and small rewards had some increase in vaccination rates, but none of those rewards are really age appropriate. I also started thinking about vaccines as a collectible, uh, kind of like collecting Pokemon cards, except you uh, got to not catch them all. So the goal that I set out when creating Vax Cards is pretty simple. It was every child should be educated and rewarded for vaccines. We wanted to achieve this in an engaging way with an incentivized collectible card game and to do this alongside reputable organizations and partners in a cost-effective way. So Vax Cards costs kind of less than a dollar to, pr to produce as a, as a just a paper card game. What is Vax Cards? So Vax Cards is a, a collectible card game. There's a disease for each character. And as you progress through the vaccine schedule, uh, the Vax Cards can be used at the time of vaccine for distraction or reward for vaccines or educational material. It's a cheap take home that can lead to discussion with uh, friends and, and family to start those conversations around diseases and vaccines. And it also importantly brings a face and an identity to these diseases which are not often thought about in society and and actually the risk of getting them the, is perceived as quite low because they're quite forgotten diseases we don't often see them uh, even as a doctor i've only seen you know a handful of cases of measles and mumps um, we just don't see them anymore largely due to vaccines but we need to bring them back into attention to keep the risk prevalent um, the diseases themselves here are a couple of the example cards uh, you can see that measles has some spots on uh, themselves and fire that represents the fever. You can see meningococcal has the distinctive papyric rash and stiff neck. Tetanus is holding a bunch of rusty nails and has locked jaw. In the top corner of each of the cards, you can learn which are viruses, which are bacteria, protozoa, and you can earn bonuses in the gameplay with stacking those mechanics and powers on top of each other. So you can also learn those symptoms and the attacking and defensing moves um, in the gameplay you basically make against each other as players um, with basic simple addition subtraction mechanics on a on a sliding scale with the aim to get your opponent down to zero so the vax cards timeline since initially funding on kickstarter back in 2016 after the kind of napkin idea it made traction in really good medical journals such as the lancet it got taken up in around 25 different countries um, we ran a small pilot study for effectiveness in Kenya, which was fun with some high school students. And then it uh, became my PhD project with Monash University and a partnership with the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. And I, I ran a 20 school uh, randomized control trial in 2019, which I'm currently just coming to the end of. The journey of Vax Cards has led to many network partnerships with NGOs, academic, retail, government, industry, uh, appearances in really legitimate public health and, and some gaming journals. Um, and occasionally even seeing it out in the wild in a game store is, is pretty fun for me still. So here's a small video of the pilot trial in Kenya. Um, I'll play it now. You can see the high school students really give it a So even pronouncing the, the hard names like Meningococcal is exactly why we kept the hard scientific names in it. It leads to those learning experiences throughout the game. Use one eye. One eye. Close your eye. And you have to close 
eyes for avoiding penalties in the game, which is similar to some of the symptoms of the disease. So there's a bit of fun social mechanics in there as well. And this guy said, and then with locked jaw, you have to not speak. So that's a little bit of a, what it looks like in the classroom. Yep. Um, that pilot study so did show he goes some increasing down positive attitudes and, and knowledge towards vaccination and diseases. Um, however, they weren't obviously statistically significant with a low kind of number in the classroom. PhD, on the other hand, um, ran in 2019. This is the study design. So it was a control and experimental randomized control trial held with uh, year seven students during their vaccine schedule. Half the school's students were rewarded with a pack of vax cards when they returned their consent form for vaccination. Um, and then they were able to play them in the classroom as well. So we were measuring the return rates and vaccination rates of those consent forms and also a survey on vaccine confidence and hesitancy following that. Um, we also followed up with the stakeholders of the schools with some qualitative research about how the staff found actually using the game and delivering it as a tool. We did see a slight increase in vaccine confidence with those who played vax cards. However, we were quite limited by the few groups of schools we had in each cluster. We'd obviously like to repeat this with, uh, with more schools, longer timing of the intervention, and maybe some lesson plans to help direct the use of, of VAX cards in the classroom. So what's next for VAX cards? It's, it's been a pretty wild journey from concept to bootstrapping a creation as a, as a game, um, you know, that came out of uh, really just some, some interesting clinical insights from me to being in the Lancet, to, to traveling to London to learn off really world experts in vaccine hesitancy, and now being asked to present at a, a large games conference is really exciting. So I'm a long way off the impact I want to make with vax cards, really in a pandemic where the importance of vaccination is so obvious, vaccine confidence has never been so important. And with a tool like this, using games that costs less than a dollar to make, um, it needs much more traction games can really change behaviors as we all know uh, i've come a long way with this and to not have the impact now would be quite frustrating for me so look uh, any support is really welcome for me i'm still an unfunded phd student really with a with the game as an idea and you know the ability to kind of scale it up still looking for always partners and people to kind of promote the game um and and get larger trials and research out there and currently actually looking to donate a few hundred boxes that we have in a warehouse in the USA. So uh, if you know anyone who wants <laughs> some VAX cards, email me. And if you would like to get involved, we're, we're always um, looking forward to extending our partnerships as well. Thank you so much. I hope you learned a little bit about maybe some tabletop games and their impact that they can have. And I'm looking forward to hearing some of the rest of the talks of the conference. Thanks very much.